We're going to look to make you some money with a free play video in college football, a little Lone Star State battle as Texas hosts Texas San Antonio UTSA, which is currently fallen on hard times. Jeff Trailer stayed put, despite the fact that there were other higher profile schools sniffing around, but he has made a great program in San Antonio, wanted to stick by it and be loyal. And uh, just a little hiccup right now because the Roadrunners are 0-2 coming off a decisive loss to rival Texas State, falling by 39-49-10. I was on the over personally for clients, and we just barely got there on the strength of the Bobcats by a point to a half a point, depending on where you got it. It was 58 or 58 and a half, ended up 49-10. So we won, but I watched a lot of Texas San Antonio. Let me tell you, they've got a lot of work to do. Uh, Frank Harris, who had been there literally seven years, I think, maybe even a little longer, uh, you know, through the COVID season, through some red shirts, uh, some injury issues. Uh, Harris was the man and was one of the older players in college football. So very literally a man uh, in guiding UTSA's rise from a fledgling program to a uh, group of five power, uh, you know, last year they were really solid in the American and uh, again, expected to compete for a title with the likes of Memphis and Tulane, but currently they've got very little going on. Uh, Owen McCown, uh, younger son of Josh McCown, former NFL QB, is the starting quarterback, but he was pulled pretty early against Texas State due to being ineffective and backup Eddie Lee Marburger actually ended up with better stats, but uh, both struggled, and McCown will be back out there for this game against Texas. The uh, Longhorns are 34 and a half point favorite in this contest, and there is no look ahead factor to help UTSA here as Texas will host ULM, which is a much worse team uh, than the Roadrunners are next week and obviously the Longhorns talk of college football right now they went into the big house and routed defending champion Michigan 31 to 12 a dominant performance for them remember that they are without CJ Baxter one of the better running backs in the country tore up his knee in the uh, over the summer and uh, is not part of the Longhorns backfield but they have found ways to replace him and really get a great push up front it's a very smooth looking offensive line with lots of push and then uh, the running backs that they do have Jaden blue looks great you're my boy blue Trey Wisner uh, really looks like a smooth runner very patient they've got Jared Gibson as well um, you know really got it done against a very stout Michigan defense without any big plays outside of uh, wide receiver Ryan Wingo's 55 yard scamper and then defensively they are loaded at Texas and they shut down a, uh, a Michigan squad that is still trying to find it on that side of the football. And so if you're Jeff Trailer right now, you're going back to McCown, you're hoping he figures it out. Oscar Cardenas, the uh, tight end, a real playmaker for uh, the Roadrunners, currently AWOL because he's not missing in action. He's absent without leaving uh, target-wise. Did not have a catch against Texas State. And yet he was out there, he was blocking, was trying to get the rushing game established, and uh, they've got to go to plan B, and they will do so against a Longhorn squad that's going to build up depth over the next couple of the weeks. You know, you've got the Roadrunners, you're nearly a five-touchdown favorite, you know you're going to win the game barring some disastrous start. Uh, so this is a game where Steve Sarkeesian will play a lot of backups. Um, do so again next week. Remember, go, going forward, they will play – at uh against oklahoma at cherry world in the red river rivalry game on uh october i think it's 12th um and then they play georgia on october 19th hosting them at uh at royal texas memorial stadium so you know back to back you got oklahoma your biggest rival and then you've got the georgia bulldogs uh now w one of the teams that you've got to, the only one the only team you're basically looking up at uh, in the SEC if you're Texas and you play them back to back. So everything now points to that and building up program depth. I think Sarkisian will do that, but that does create an opportunity for UTSA to work against some backups and generate some points. And that's why I like the over at 53 and a half 
54 points, depending on where you get it. There's some 54 and a halfs out there. Uh, currently, obviously, UTSA comes in at 0 and 2. They've uh, uh, they've uh, really struggled in terms of what they were able to do. Um, the, the, the one and one, zero oh and two against the spread, but one and one they beat Kennesaw State, and uh, one and one also on the over under tip. Whereas uh, Texas comes in undefeated straight up and against the spread, uh, and again laying thirty four and a half in this game, I really don't want anything to do with that, especially with uh, UCSA looking to build confidence late in this game against Texas backups, but we don't know how far Texas will roof the result when their regulars are in there. But I do like the over. I think we'll see points because we'll see the roadrunners try to generate offense for 60 minutes here. Uh, and again, you, Texas comes off holding Michigan to 286 yards, just 82 on the ground. It's going to be imperative for UTSA to get some inroads going on the offense through the ground game. They've got, um, you know, a, a, guard, uh, a running back that's that's back from the glory days of the UTSA program in the last few years in Kavorian Barnes. Uh, so he needs to uh, get some holes together and make some if there aren't many available. But again, against that first team Texas defense, it's going to be tough. But once you get into the backups, I think UTSA is going to make some inroads. And then offensively, you've got a Texas team that's got Quinn Ewers uh, really playing well. He played mistake-free football against a really talented Michigan defense. Uh, he's got a bunch of uh, receiving options from Matthew Golden to Isaiah Bond to Gunnar Helm, who led the team in receptions against Michigan, with all the running backs I mentioned earlier. So uh, Texas will have it going on offensively. And when he sits, they bring in Arch Manning, and Arch Manning has to get some work. He completed uh, five of six passes and threw for a score in uh, Texas's opening victory against Colorado State. Did not get in there against Michigan, but he should have work uh, over the next couple of weeks against UTSA and ULM. So again, we like the over here, 53 and a half, 54, 54 and a half. Uh, try to get in at the lowest number, obviously, but we're going to clear that bar and ride the over between this Roadrunners Longhorns matchup. These teams have only faced each other once. Texas won 41 to 20 in uh, 2022. 41 to uh, 17. We'll get it done here. I think it's actually going to be something like uh, 48 to 10, 48 to 17, something like that. And that will obviously get the job done for over 53 and a half, 54 and a half, depending on where you get it. Uh, weather should be cooperative uh, in Austin this weekend and Steve Sarkeesian will start getting even more numbers for Quinn Ewers as uh, he begins his Heisman push, which uh, basically will be decided by what he does against talented defenses at Oklahoma and Georgia. Smash that like button and make sure you're subscribed to all of our videos at Wager Talk TV so you never miss a winner. We've got you covered all college football season. Uh, and the WNBA playoffs and Major League Baseball pennant race is uh, already upon us and uh, the playoffs right around the corner. Uh, and we've also got a great deal going on. Four weeks of college football and the NFL available for under $50 a week. Get 30 days for both college football and the NFL for only $199. That's a savings of over 20%. I had a great week, too, in college football. Hit my... Uh, Top play, a 4% winner uh, with uh, Missouri blanking Buffalo, and they scored late. Thank you, Mizzou. And uh, I also had a great uh, NFL week one. Uh, was uh, a tough beat in the Friday night Eagles and Packers game because I was on the Packers plus the points, but everything else went my way. I had the Eagles, I, I had the Chiefs and uh, Ravens going over the post to total. Uh, I had a 5% winner on the Colts and Texans getting over and Monday night went my way because I was on the San Francisco 49ers where a lot of you were on the Jets. And so I had some winners, hit some TD props. I was on uh, both, uh, you know, two touchdown scores in, uh, in uh, that game with Debo Samuel getting on the board for the 49ers. So again, we're, we're going to keep printing tickets and cashing money 
And uh, I want you to make sure that you're subscribed to Winter Talk TV so you never miss a play. And check me out at sm.buzz slash TDM for package information and free plays at that bio page. And on Twitter, you can follow me at Mejia Dinero. Have a wonderful, profitable weekend. I'm Tony Mejia. Thanks for watching.